The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 242. NASDAQ is up 60. S&P is up 17 and a half. Gold contract uh, up 60 cents, trading at 13.28 an ounce. We get silver up five cents, fourteen dollars seventy nine cents an ounce. Now both gold and silver. Well, gold's got to strength last three days, folks. Uh, and actually, about uh, 20 minutes ago, you had another buyer come in uh, big. So I expect you're going to go uh, higher. Silver. Silver finally got a bid yesterday, uh, fourteen seventy nine. We'll see if that can get some follow through. Uh, light sweet crude. No buyers. Yeah. Yeah. 52 handle, I see it. 52.98. And that baby looks to me like uh, we're going to have 44 over it, which is going to be really wild. December 26, that's where it looks like it's going. Notes and bonds, bottom line, 10 year note down 11 ticks, 126.17. 30 year bond off 23, 154.17. You had the 10 year um, 2.07 yesterday, okay? Yeah. Uh, bottom line, they're backing down with light volume, so they're not done going up. King dollar, king dollar up 165 ticks, 97,225. The euro is trading at 112 to one U.S. dollar. The yen is at 108, and that's helping gold tremendously. Uh, that's looking like it wants to go to 104, and the pound is at 126 to one U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks of TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks. Kevin has an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. You want to understand the option market, option strategies, futures. Great program. If you haven't test driven yet the Think or Swim platform, real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, hit the button, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade paper money. Follow Kevin and his team every trading day. We got high volatility. You got different strategies. Uh, <laughs> blink, and you're going to have a different strategy in this market. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, this is supposed to be the end of earnings season. It's supposed to be after Memorial Day. It's supposed to be boring summer trading. And this is anything but boring, frankly. Yeah. I mean, every day we get some catastrophic market moving event. Now, and Tommy just read it in his update at the beginning of the hour, Jerome Powell just went full dovish on this market. So it looks like all the, you know, what the bond market has been telling this market is actually now starting to embed itself in the FOMC because, you know, with James Bullard uh, yesterday and now Jerome Powell today, yep. and, I mean, this Fed has turned dovish. And now even I have to say that it looks like they're at least leaning towards lowering rates more. You know, it's amazing. Is that so? When we started the program yesterday, Kevin, at uh, ten, right? The September. What we're doing, folks, we're looking at the Fed fund uh, implied probability. Uh, and you know, the bottom line is this is important. It changes very quickly, but it's still important because it's it's the probability of rate cuts or rate hikes. When we started the program yesterday, the September one, I believe, was at fifty-one percent. It's at eighty-nine point five today. That's September eighteenth. Yeah. It's like that is a big number. And the July one. Is it 57? You know, so right. the, there's no doubt that the, the market is actually pushing the Fed around. You know, right. The question now is when, right? Yes. I don't think, frankly, that it's if anymore, but it's when. Are they going to do it in the summer months, or are they going to do it wait, wait, wait till the September meeting in the fall? Uh, but you have to start looking at the data, and the bonds are telling you. And and now here is the FOMC. It looks like. The bond market, maybe as it should, is leading the FOMC to make their their, their decisions. So, you know, this, this is unprecedented, really. But it's but it's fascinating and exciting to to, to go through. So it is. You know, it's a pretty mean, interesting day we're having today. It, you know, I mean, we've all seen some pretty good moves in the bond market over the course of years. But folks, this is a very fast move. I mean, it's it's very unusual for the 10-year to go from like a 2.4 to 2.07.
uh, in right. what, a week and a half. I yeah. mean, that, that's the 30-year, the, the you know, can move around like that. The 10-year normally doesn't. I mean, right. <laughs> Tom O'Brien, there was a time in our lives where people used to talk about going to the bond market to avoid volatility, right. not, not, not look for more volatility. And so what an incredible turn of events this has been. No, there's no doubt. And, you know, if we switch gears and go to those tech stocks, I mean, these tech yeah. stocks, they, that, that's, that, this antitrust thing looks like it's going to be some, you know, I mean, it, if, you, if you rewind the Microsoft deal, folks, okay, what happens once something like this happens, it takes like four or five years. This is not going to yeah. be a, you know, fast thing. But the bottom yeah. line is that once you're on to it, guess what? You know, they're going to give up something. It's going to be a question of what they're going to give up. Yeah. <coughs> Yesterday was basically Fangmageddon because they hit all these names and it was one after the other. It's like, it was like a dating site, right? It was like Facebook, okay, the FTC's got Facebook, the D D Department of Justice has Google, now uh, let's see, Apple, oh, that was 1230, <laughs> Department of Justice has Apple, so you take yeah, that they one, they're like, they're I wouldn't want the Department of Justice, I'd no. go with the, I'd go with the FTC before the Department of Justice, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's just amazing. I mean, that was an Apple. Think about it. They're at their uh, worldwide uh, developers conference, and Tim Cook's coming out with all these changes, and all of a sudden, boom, 1230, you get hit with the uh, Justice Department. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so yeah. that was what, a, what an interesting day that was. Man. Uh, amazing, actually. You know what's amazing yeah. is that um, I guess digitally we're going so fast like Tommy was at his desk yesterday when all this was coming out, and he said to me, "Hey, listen, they're going to do away with iTunes, and we're going to have uh, three apps." I said, yeah. You know, it's like yeah. iTunes was the biggest thing in the world when that hit. Yeah. It was. I think. I think. I think. I really believe that iTunes is. He. It got Spotify. Right. Spotify yeah. really came in and changed the way everyone downloads music now, and I think iTunes didn't, uh, you know, I think Apple, what they probably should do is go and just retool iTunes and change it because Spotify changed the game. You know, let's face it. Yeah, no, I, listen, I, I use uh, Pandora and I don't pay for anything. And it's like, yeah, I, I think once, and I've been on that now for, I don't know, five or six years. And once you use it, you just kind of get used to it and you get the stations right. and it's like, you know, they, they ask you every hour, you sure you don't want to pay? No, I don't want to pay. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure. I, I started with Spotify, and now I pay for Spotify. Okay. Because it's so easy to use, and so, you know, and I, I listen to a lot of music, right, in the car, on the yes. drive to from work, and I'm telling you, Spotify is user-friendly. It's amazing how user-friendly it is. Yeah, and that's really important. That that whole user-friendly deal, whether it's on the TV yeah. or everything else digitally, is yeah. is crucial. I mean, that's right. One of the and it just made that it Amazon just made iTunes obsolete. Yeah, and that's why Amazon got so big so quick at yeah, the beginning, the right? Process that, of that everything. One right. that one hit deal, right? Pretty amazing. Yeah, but I mean, crazy day. You know, we're getting late in earnings season, so we've got a couple good ones today. We've got Salesforce. Oh That'll yeah. That'll be one we're going to look at hard today. Um, the, the, the swans are going to come on and talk, uh, like Folio is going to come on today and talk about American Eagle Outfitters, another beat up and battered retailer. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about today, guys. And folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, check it out. Kevin, you have a great day, safe day. We look forward to the program in 45 minutes. All right, guys, you have a great day, too. Thanks for having me Thanks, on. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 293. Get the Nasdaq up 78. S&Ps are up 21. And as we were talking with Kevin, uh, we do have Powell. Kyle Powell's going to speak later, right? Or is he speaking right now? Let's I believe see. he's speaking right now. Okay. So FedEx, uh, FedEx, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell signaled an openness to cut interest rates if necessary, pledging, pledging to keep a close watch on the fallout from deepening set of disputes between the U.S. and its largest trading partners. Um, yeah, so we're, we're closely monitoring the implications of these developments for the U.S. economic outlook. And as always, and this is the one that's getting a lot of press, we yep. will act as appropriate to sustain the expansion with a strong la labor market and inflation near a symmetric 2% objective. Um, so we will act okay. as appropriate. Okay, so Paul said in his opening marks in Chicago, so he is speaking yeah. right now. Yeah, so uh, his speech was dedicated mostly to the Fed's year-long goal of reviewing its monetary policy strategies, tools, and communication practices. With the economy growing, unemployment low, and inflation low and stable, this is the right time to engage the public broadly on these topics, Powell said. Uh, so the two-day research conference is the centerpiece of the review. Fed officials and leading academics are set to debate whether they need to make changes in order to shore up inflation expectations. Yeah. And if we go over here, watch this. We go over and look at this. This is probably right when that come out too because gold got a nice spike here. So watch this folks. This is gonna get wild watching this shake out. You get that's yep, it. That nine nine fifty. I believe you know? that was a nine fifty five. So yeah. somewhere in that bar though, right? Yeah. That's sweet. So yeah. what you had there is that you had sixteen thousand contracts. Um, you get a nice pop I always like to see something like that because that's just another sign of strength. I mean, gold had plenty of movement yesterday. Uh, that is a big, that's a big movement. Yeah. Silver, we go take a look at the silver market. Now, silver finally broke its downtrend yesterday, and I'd really like to see um, some real volume in this today. But it looks and it looks like we're going to get it. Um, yeah, we get sixty-five thousand. Yesterday uh, we did one hundred and twelve thousand. So, silver, not much movement here. Only three pennies. Okay, but. Uh, what silver finally did do uh, is break its downtrend, and this thing has been going on for some time. And, you know, that's a nice decisive break also. Yeah. That's how you like to see it. Um, and then if we go to the dollar, what you're going to see inside the dollar is just the opposite. The 
dollar did come down with volume yesterday, and today's going to be a big day all around because, oh, uh, this is good. I like it. Okay. So earlier this morning, folks, is that what had happened is that the dollar had already rejected lower price, you know, at this 96,900. Now what you can see is that it's wavering back and forth. Um, so I, it's up 75 ticks right now. Yeah, that what's important to keep your head wrapped around 18,000 contracts. So now we're going to have a lower low with volume. And if we look at, look at it intraday, you're going to see there's some good volatility in this contract. Yeah, you see, look at that. That's, <laughs> I guess it totally makes sense. You, know, you get the spike in gold on the way up. You get the spike in the dollar on the way down. And, uh, yeah, exact same number. Yep. So that is saying that the dollar also wants lower price. We have the volume going with us. Now, if you look at the broad market, my take on the broad market, more than likely we're setting up a B to C, even another, a larger ABC structure down. Uh, you get the spies up 286. You're at 16 million shares, and you know coming at 104 million. So we'll see what kind of volume we get. If we if we do 104 million, then it's not an ABC structure down. You do less than that, then you have a probability that you can be doing an ABC structure down. You know, went to a low yesterday, 96 million. The NDX 100 is still not getting any help. Uh, we take a look at these Qs. This was uh, quite a move. You you're up two dollars and 18 cents. Go down yesterday to 169.27, 76, 75 million shares. Now, what's going to be cool today is, is this, folks. So this has volume in it right now. And, you know, you're, you're only 40 minutes into the market. So what I've seen is this, is that when you get volume in early like this, and then if the volume dies, that is more of an indication that you had the pop at the beginning. That's, you know, folks that are either get into the market or closing their shot position, you know, from the last couple of days. And if that volume dies off, that's a higher probability that you are setting up a, a ABC structure on the way down. Because, you know, if we do 13, let's just say times six, well, bottom line is that, uh, you know, you're up there at what, 624? You're up there at 84 million. And, uh, well, I guess it needs more than 84 million. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. 42? No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah yesterday no. it was like 70. Yeah, no, it doesn't need more than 84 million. So, so that's going to be cool watching that shake out because if that does die in the vine, then your probability is that this was the straightening out of positions as we come out of the gate because you can see that even the S&P, we just got another pop here. Oh, definitely. Dow's up 310. Yeah, so, yes. June... Uh, Okay, so okay, so this is sticking its head out here. This is the E mini, and well, it's seven thirty at night. Well, let's go. I'm going to bring this closer. Let me bring this closer because we're overtaking a swing point right now so that's going to be the crucial part to keep your eye on this okay so that's that's the opening bar at 81,000 contracts so we're uh let's see we're about an hour into the day yeah and oh where are we in this bar yeah 20 we're four minutes into the bar 27,000 so the number keep it's this uh 27.74.25 you're gonna do the test right now we'll see whether it can uh get up and over that baby and get some action going. Uh, we take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities uh, in this marketplace, and we'll see whether we get volume at the end of the day out here. Uh, close to the end of the day, you get advanced micro, uh, as usual, up the top. That's up 75 cents. You have uh, Apple up 345. Citigroup's up 275. Look at some of those financials. Yeah. Um, Tesla's up $7.67. CVS Health up $2. I wonder what's moving that. I saw a story. They're going to be having a ton of their stores either new or revamped to offer more health services. So the uh, number 1,500 like, stores. Seems like, like turned into a, like little clinics. Yeah, and that's yeah. combining, you know, with I think it's Aetna, right, that they purchased right. and also that's part of their right. plan in terms of more, more, more blood testing and yeah. so forth. Um, you can see that, how it started, folks. Uh, and then, you know, the bottom line is that you can see that why wouldn't they be clinics? I yep. mean, you know, you get doctors opening clinics all over the place. And yep. they're, they're calling them actually emergency rooms so they can get more money out of the, you know, the Medicaid okay. and the insurance benefits. So that's, yeah. that's a tough-looking chart. But, 
Yeah, we'll see where it goes. $120 down to 55 Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Look at that. 1,500 new health hub stores by the end of 2021. So convert 1,500 of the drug stores in the next three years to new health service hub locations, expanded clinics, wellness rooms, uh, consultations, pharmacists, Let's see, uh, yeah, refocusing. Wow, they almost have 10,000 um, stores on health services that, after that $68 billion that acquisition of Aetna. That's, that's 10,000 stores. So this year, the hub is going to roll out in three regions, Philly, South Jersey, Atlanta, and Tampa, Tampa Florida. Florida. There we go. Good. We'll get a first-eye view. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow at 341. NASDAQ up 98. S&P's up 28. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 351. You get the NASDAQ up by uh, 105. S&Ps are up 30. Let's go take a look uh, inside this uh, good old Dow Industrials. And, uh, it's moving quickly. It's moving quickly. No doubt about that, man. Uh, Point-wise, uh, uh, yeah. Boeing. Boeing putting 44 positive points. Goldman, 32. Home Depot, 30. Apple, 29. Uh, only stocks that are negative out here, uh, slightly, by the way. United Health putting a one 
point four negative points up. You better talk quick. I know. No, totally, because <laughs> it's all it's all going positive right yeah. now, folks. Um, let me just look at this for a second. Yeah, the only stock that's negative is two hundred and thirty-six dollar stock that's negative by twenty cents. Right. Yeah. Okay, so if we take a look at this, you, you get up, you get a nice pop. There's no doubt about that. So the real question is going to be, let me go look at the diamonds here so we can get an idea in the ETF structure. So you get 1.4 million, you're going at the 5.1. So this is going to be cool too, watching how this shakes out. Because the way this is set up is that you should be able to get some volume in, into this today. And if it dies on the vine, just like I said with the S&P, that's a, that's a monster heads up. Because right now, you have volume in these equities. You know, there's no, there's no two ways about that. Yeah. The... Um, what, what, what was Kevin, when we were talking about with Kevin, he, they were looking at, uh, there's a couple numbers coming out today, right? American Eagle, I think. Did he? American. Uh, yeah, I forget. He had one good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so uh, we got it. I don't know it. if he said that. Let's pull up. Okay, so... No, yeah. Oh, uh, that's coming out tomorrow. Okay, so retailer. Look at that. That's so. Uh, that's what's intriguing here, folks, is that this retail is already down at its December December lows, and we actually got down there. Is that a weekly? Okay, so we got down there last week with 22 million, and last week was Memorial Day too, right? Coming into Memorial Day. Uh, no, last week was Memorial well, Day. Correct, yeah. Okay, so check this out. So what you have here on a four-day week, too, you can see that, see that volume expanding, 22 million? Well, what you actually did there, the way I do it, you know, you just divide it by four, multiply it by five. The bottom line is that you're almost looking at 26 million, and you're coming into 29. So this is not done on the way down yet. Um, yeah, I mean, Gap had some tough earnings, right, with Old Navy, American Eagle, probably in a similar yes. spot in retail yeah. to those two companies. Oh, there's no doubt. Um, there's no doubt. And I think that's what the market kind of priced in there, even ahead of probably tomorrow. Right. Yeah. All right, that's one business, man. Uh, it'd be very tough to <laughs> oh. wrap your head around, you know. You got competitors everywhere, let alone from the likes of... The Walmart with their brand, Target with their brand, right? right? Amazon going to have their own private label brand, etc. Right. Um, let alone the competition you're facing in likes of Gap, you know, your own oh, competitors yeah. in the malls. Right. Yeah. Uh, we get over and take a look at that oil market. So this is pretty cool, folks. Okay, we got lots of oil, evidently. Um, you know, yesterday it had looked like that oil could actually save itself. Um, at one point, you know, we had got all the way down to that 52.11, but then it rejected total lower price and actually did, by early early in the yeah. day too because by mean, the time we did our show it was back up yeah it was yeah back. i mean that low was almost at uh actually last night at like excuse, two nights right i mean that that low in terms of 5211 was at 10 o'clock the night before in yes. terms of um sunday night almost right yeah right so this is still this still wants lower price um it's gonna be a, the way this this is setting up it looks to me that you know Oil still basically leading uh, the S&P at a lower price. You know, yeah. and t today's going to be today's going to be a great day, folks. Just to see, does the volume die? If it dies, you get a potential ABC structure on the way down. Bitcoin. Yeah. So we get some action to the downside again. Look at that drop off at about eight o'clock last night. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> quite a drop off indeed. By uh, it looks like six fifty six, and then by eight o'clock, you're down at seventy eight hundred, and we're back at about eight thousand. Um, let's drill it down. And, uh, you know, you should expect this kind of volatility if you're trading it, as most people would know. But nonetheless, a little right. bit of volatility, man. And here, check this out. This we were just this, it's pretty remarkable. Even as you go, yesterday, I didn't realize we were up on almost 8,800, and you dropped to 7,800. Yeah, so here, check this out, too. So one of the Bitcoin pioneers... Let me do a, a go. Ah, I saw this. BRK, yes. yeah. I'll do it with Burke. He won here. the. Not he won. He, yeah, he won it all right. He for bit four, it. 4.7. There you go. Uh, four, is that uh, right number here? two. Number two. Number two. Okay. So this is. So cryptocurrency pioneer Justin Sun bid a record 4.57 million to have lunch with Warren Buffett, who famously referred to Bitcoin as probably a rat poison squared. <laughs> I wonder when that quote was from. 
Yeah. As in things have changed a lot over three, four years. But yeah, you got him, you got Jamie Dimon, right? Yeah. Throwing a little shade at, at the whole crypto market. Um, so yeah, this, I read about um, this guy. I mean, remarkable story. He seems really young too, just from his picture. Yeah, um, he is 28 years old. Is that yeah? And uh, so he launched Tronix, also known as Tron or TRX, in 2017. Paul's talked about that. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I recognize the name for sure. Yeah. It's valued at 2.56 billion as the 10th largest crypto in the world. Um, when cryptos had their run too, I yeah. think this peaked out at like 16 billion something. I mean, this really? is what it's at right now. I mean, when they were all rocking, it was really up there, of course. Um, um, and so, yeah, a, uh, so it's a, it is very common in investment circles that so people will change their minds. This is Sun saying, investment opportunities are best when lots of people are underestimating the technology. Um, so he looks forward to trying, right. and, and trying to enlighten Buffett, and he's going to bring with him um, a number of crypto people, I guess, yes. in terms of industry people right. to have uh, that type of discussion. And, you know, as you go through this, folks, this is the same one I looked at yesterday. This is... Uh, you know, this is an investment for him because, yeah, this is awesome. Because, here, yeah, watch this. In previous auctions, included Greenlight's Capital, David Ihon, who was the highest bidder in 2003. Now, this Ted, Ted Welcher, though. Yeah, Weschler, maybe. Won two auctions and later was hired by Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, as an investor deputy. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's... Isn't Look this at the a, history and the bids. Isn't this cool? Yeah. This is the so going back to 2000, the bid was 25,000. 2001, 18,000. It went down first one. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I know, right? And then uh, 2003, it popped to 250. Yeah, Ironhorn got the the, yeah. the party started for actually probably realizing how much value you could have in that talking with them. Yeah. And just you know, and no matter what, creating a conversation, right. creating a business partner, creating somebody you might just be able to call sometime. Yeah. Um, for these guys, right. is, is worth it. As and this is a charitable donation. This yeah. goes to uh, Buffett's ex-wife, uh, who passed away. There it is. The Glide Charity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and they've uh, they've raised thirty million. As the bids have climbed, as we saw, yeah. So and they provide meals for the city's homeless. Yeah, it's pretty And cool they there. need it in San Francisco. They're, it's yeah. stationed out of San Francisco. You talk about 30 million, yeah. San Francisco, the, 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 a closet cost you a million dollars in San Francisco, maybe more. So Sun had previously founded Paywo, <coughs> excuse me, a Snapchat-like app for China with millions of users. Wow, and then he started a token known as Tron. Um, so he's, maybe he's the next Elon of, uh, yeah. of China over there in terms of you start one thing with millions of users and then you start a crypto that peaks at over 10 billion in market cap and uh, next thing you know you're sitting down with Warren Buffett, not bad. Look at this. Uh, Tron Mule has attracted scores of gaming and application applications. Yeah, gaming and gambling. Yeah. yeah. Stay right there folks, Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 340. You get the NASDAQ up by 95. S&Ps are up 27. And uh, let's just go over to those S&Ps for a second. Take a quick look. You got a nice spike. Quite a charge, man. We're talking about almost 50 points from that low um, prior to the close yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, what you do have here is that you got volume uh, in that 1020 bar. 72,000 contracts. It's over 80, it was going to 81, but now this thing has to get back under 27.74 for lower price, you know, because that, that's a new range. And there's no reason this can't get all the way up to even, you know, if, if this is going to be a bounce, 28.02 is game here, you know. So you break down, you break the swing. It's classic. Go back up to the swing, see yeah. how that uh, baby shakes out. So. Uh, we'll see how that whole baby uh, comes up to that level. And the real key is going to be, uh, do we get up there with volume or not? If we go over to the gold market, uh, gold, no doubt, caught a, caught a great bid. I mean, the GDX, uh, look at this thing. It's in three days, you know, you go from uh, 2035. Yesterday we hit 2250 or 2230. Yep. Now, what you're going to get, you know, we got volume into this last night, too. So this is saying that, okay, we have... 2370. These swing highs a game right now. Uh, we go take a look at the uh, GLD, and you're going to see that that got juice in it also. And then platinum. Platinum finally caught a bid. Um, let's see, platinum uh, active contract. You know, yesterday you, you, you finally got a bid off the lows, so it's about time. You know, we went from uh, 792 to 824. Yeah. Um, but what you have here, you need another bid here. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, this is almost like how silver was setting yeah. up. Uh, one day ain't going to cut it. No, it's yeah. not. It's not. Not even a day like yesterday, which no, is a big one. No, and that's pretty intense that yeah. you get a day like yesterday and the, you you broke a smaller downtrend, but not the large one right from February. You yeah. Know, just, just not enough uh, out there. We go take a look at the 30-year. Uh, These bonds still want higher price. This is what's going to be amazing, watching this thing shake out. Uh, am I on Q? No. M still. Let's see. No, I'm not on this one. Let's see. Time is going so fast. Man. It sure is, I know. <laughs> it's like... It's already June. Yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, I am on him. Yeah. Okay, USM. You got a full point and a tick to the right. downside. Yeah, oh, I got to... It's not this contract. Cause it's, it's trailing off. Yeah, this is not enough US...
Maybe you. Q. Yeah, it's you. That's you. That is you. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, September. Okay, so we're in the September bonds. You're down to 215,000 contracts. You're going to need more than that. Yeah. Yeah, you're up with 5.7. So that, that, that'll be something to watch, though. That'll, that'll definitely be something to watch because that is uh, that is some, uh, you know, good volume on the pullback. The what If you look at the TLT, the TLT is telling me that we're actually going to go to all-time highs. If we take a look at this TLT, what you're going to see is that you broke the top of the consolidation, you know, actually you bring it here, but it really, you're bringing it over here. And that's saying, hey, guess what? You can go to those highs. And if we, if you do take a look at the, this is, <laughs> what do you see this thing? If you take a look at the US one, the generic, oh no, I want the 30 year. This one. There you go. What you're going to see right from 1980, folks, where the bull market started in bonds. Yeah, you got to go 50. That's, I know. That's 40 years ago. I, I hate to break it. To it's, it's unbelievable. What you're going to see there is go. that we never broke the downtrend, or the uptrend. And the, the point, we got, we got down to 136. 133 was the number. Yeah. Um, got got close. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. You, guess what? You didn't you didn't break it. You know. So it's like wow. Um, and you know, it seems that the bond market in general has been telling us that rates are going down. But fundamentally, uh, it's going to be wild. You know, when they start cutting rates, because it's like, because it seems like okay, why are you cutting rates? You know. But yeah. They're cutting rates because guess what? The rates we'll are too see. high. It's some manufacturing, right? Was the number out today? I saw something with Bloomberg manufacturing. Um, there could be some slowdowns in the trade war, and as in that, that could be. Uh, oh, there's going to be. Yeah. I, I so. agree. It's. I can. I can. Folks, what happens with this trade war, right? Is that, as I said yesterday, you and I, we're buying shirts and all that. You know, that's that's one thing. That's our decision. This is hitting jobs, man. This is hitting people, and it's going to hit people really hard. And all of a sudden, you get a nice little small business, and all of a sudden, you're going to pay 10 or 15% more, and all sure. of a sudden, that's your profit. Yep. And all of a sudden, you're not making any money. And then all of a sudden, do you have any extra money to make your way through it for employees? There, there's, there's ramifications that are going to be a lot bigger than, uh, you know, that the people, people are going to get hurt. It's, it's, it's a tax. That's the bottom line, you know. It's a tax. The, the real problem is there's so many companies that absolutely are dependent on Mexico and China. Sure. You know, it's like, okay, you're going to pay more money? And the real question is going to be, how much more money will we pay for the product yeah. versus the company eating? Yeah. You know, so. I mean, the journal had that article last week. I think it was 831 bucks. You're almost talking about $1,000 per consumer. Right. Straight up. That's right. it. Boom. Right. And that's the, the consumers same. don't have an extra $1,000 just to spend on. So where right. does that sort out? We'll see. Yeah. It's, you know, supply and demand, guess what? Yeah. There's going to be uh, less demand because of more money. And the real question is going to be how are these companies going to deal with it? Yeah. That's, you know, I told you, I get tiles that are coming over the border right now. It's going to be really interesting to see how the company I deal with deals with these sure. tiles. So the odd is like five grand, which is not a huge amount. But it's just going to be cool to understand yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Because sure. they're going to get whacked with 5%, you know, and we'll see whether they're going to you know, say, okay, Tom, you're going to come up with half of it, I'm going to come up with half of it, or whatever right. it is. No, you know what I, mean? I bet. So. Yeah. 877-927-6648. We, let's go take a look at that uh, HG. We'll take a look at copper. So copper out here, 265. Look at that. That's been going a one-way route on the way down. Interesting. So that December? Yeah. That's January 3rd, 263 or 265. You know, the more that you keep bringing up these charts, you know, it's like inch by inch, it wants to go visit its friends from Christmas. So maybe some Christmas presents are left there. Yeah. 877-927-6648. Dow. Dow's up 341. Nasdaq's up 98. S&P's up 27. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 325. We get the NASDAQ up 94. S&P is up 25. And, folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you're going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He is going to be doing a workshop uh, a week from tomorrow, That's Wednesday. Right. It's called the Tide. Yeah, it's a good name. For the opening call for that Chapman wave, riding right that tide. Uh, so a week from tomorrow, 90-minute webinar with Basil. He's going to be in there with subscribers to the opening call. Uh, it's called the Tide, the webinar. 5 p.m. right after your show, he'll be in there and he'll be going to talk about the techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether it trends bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. He's also going to speak specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, rates, and key stocks. Get a little bit more information over here once you get over. The technical tools used are going to be available on uh, you know, variety of software, as in normal stuff people are going to be able to do. Basil breaking it down. Um, so I encourage people, check it out. And that'll be archived, of course, 90 minutes a week from tomorrow. And uh, when people do sign up, you immediately gain access to three archived webinars Basil's get in there. I pulled them up right now, so this yeah. is kind of the subscriber area that only subscribers gain access to. You have Anything Goes, Basil's webinar he did about two months ago, April 3rd, the stock market's key phase. That's a 90-minute webinar there. He's got what next for, What's Next for the Market, what he had done in December, and then the Chapman Wave Tools that helped identify the market's last top in October. So check out all of those. Go. You sign up, you get access to them immediately. Of course, you get the opening call, Basil out there 
uh, every morning with his charts, putting them out, whether it's on the weekend. I know he loves a Saturday update, a Sunday update. He does. He does a great job. And uh, he filled in for Larry this morning this at morning. 9, and he's yeah. going to be back at it at noon today, rocking it out. It's a beautiful day. It sure is. You stay right there, folks. we got Fast Market coming up next, and then, of course, we got our man Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Go get him, folks.